Hey guys, it's Julia here, and today in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to check for bad memory or RAN, which we're going to use a program called Memtest86. Now, I'm downloading it right now, and this is the how to do it on UEFI, but it's pretty much the same for Legacy, except for Legacy, you have to download an older version. But I'm downloading the latest Memtest at the time of the recording of this video, but even if there is a newer version, they're all the same anyway. So I'm just gonna, you know, extract the files and stuff and run their tool to make a USB. I will say you do need to have a USB flash drive. Be sure there's nothing important on that USB flash drive because this will erase all the data on it. So be sure you do have a backup. I recommend just using their utility to create the USB because it seems to work perfectly fine. You can also use Rufus, but for this demonstration, I use their utility just to make it easier and it does work. So anyways, that is how you create a USB for UEFI. I'm now gonna show how to create a USB in Legacy and then afterwards I'll show you booting the USBs. All right, so for Legacy, you have to go to the older versions. I'll leave a link in the description, but you have to download the older one and then I just run their utility once again to create a USB. I did show videos of Rufus, but I just decided not to include them because it was a lot of videos. But for Legacy, you would do like NBR, and for UEFI, you would do GPT. So anyway, let's boot these USBs. Alright guys, so now that the USB is created, you're going to plug it into the computer that you want to run the test on. So in this case, I'm going to run it on this one because this one's experiencing a lot of crashing problems. And what we're going to do is after it's plugged in, the easiest way to boot the USB if it's a UEFI system is to go to the power, hold shift, and click restart. And you'll get this please wait screen. And that's a good thing. It makes it really easy to boot USBs and this will work on most UEFI systems. I don't think this will work on legacy. So use a device. And then in this case, it's USB HDD because it's a USB hard drive technically, and that's what you choose to boot it, and it should automatically boot it. If it does not work, you can look up your boot menu key for your manufacturer, go to your computer's boot menu and select the USB from there, and it should boot. Also, if you are on Legacy, you're gonna have to do that anyway. And if you wanna find out if your computer is UEFI or Legacy, just open MS Info 32, and it should tell you right there if you're on UEFI or Legacy. So if you're on UEFI, you can use that tool that I showed that comes with Memtest. And generally, this is a good step to do because that way you could tell if your RAM is bad or not. And faulty RAM can cause all kinds of issues. Like weird crashes, freeze-ups, things just getting corrupted. And this computer has had like three really bad corrupted Windows installs and it keeps blue screening with memory management, so pretty sure this RAM is bad. Alright guys, so another method to boot the USB, at least on my Lenovo ThinkPad, is to push ENTER to enter this menu and then push F12 to go to the boot menu and then select the USB. The reason I'm re-recording this is because I got interrupted in the next clip, so I have to boot the USB again. So I decided to boot it this way instead. So now once this boots, I'm gonna show you guys what the actual memory test looks like. So give it a few minutes because it does take a bit of time to boot since it has to check a lot of stuff before it actually boots into it. So once it boots, it'll say memory test will automatically start. Just let it automatically start. It'll, it'll start doing four passes on the memory. And if you start seeing errors pop up, then you know your RAM is faulty or maybe the RAM stick is loose. So you can try reseeding your RAM and seeing if that fixes the issue, or you could try a different RAM slot. As you can see, it already found one error. So that's not good already because the test just started basically and it already found a problem. Now I know this RAM in this computer is faulty because I did run, run a MEM test prior and it came back with errors as well. I did try reseeding my RAM, I did try a different slot, 
it didn't work. So this eight gig stick of RAM is unfortunately bad and I'm gonna have to replace it. It's really sad because this is actually a pretty good computer and when I first got it, it experienced a lot of weird issues and now I see why. So I'm gonna have to get some new RAM for it. But in this case, it failed. The RAM, the RAM test failed. It already found five errors. I think when I ran this, it found like over 200 because I left it running and it's just gonna keep finding more and more and more errors. So after you pretty much know your RAM is bad, just push escape and then two to end test. And it's gonna say that it failed because obviously it failed if it found errors. And then at this point, you could press a key. It'll display a summary about your computer, I guess, and things about the RAM. And then enter again. Do I want to save it? I really don't, but I'm just going to hit enter. It probably saved anyway. And now we're back at the normal screen if you do want to, like, run different tests. But really, the basic test it already does is good enough, in my opinion. But if you want to do further testing or do anything differently, you can also probably push a key at the beginning to do that. So anyways, I'm going to tell it to exit and I'll just tell it to shut down because we're done running the memory test. I'm gonna unplug this and you can check your RAM with other programs like CPU-Z is a good program to check what kind of RAM you have so you know what you need to buy in order to replace it. But also if you go to task manager and you go to the memory tab, it'll also say how fast your RAM is. It might not say what DDR it is, which is why I recommend downloading CPU-Z for that. So anyways, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm gonna show you guys how to run this on the legacy system now. All right, so I decided to put that Memtest Legacy on my Ventoy USB, which Ventoy is pretty much a way you can put multiple ISOs or images on one USB, and I think that will have a higher chance of booting than the USB I made with Rufus and with the program. So you'll see with HPs in the corner, it'll actually tell you to push Escape to get to the startup options. So we will push that with the startup menu. But if you just push F9, it would have already went to the boot device options, but I just wanted to do that. So I'm gonna boot my USB and then, all right, so now I'm gonna select Memtest X86 USB and hope it works. It looks like it is working maybe. So the default, I think, yep, there we go, okay. So in this demonstration, I used a Ventoy to boot it, which allows you to boot multiple ISOs on one computer. It'll work with both UEFI and Legacy. However, if you're booting this in Legacy, be sure to copy the older image because that was the reason why I couldn't get it to boot with the other one because Memtest x86 stopped supporting Legacy systems, so you have to download the older one. But I'll leave a card to the Ventoy video if you guys want to make a Ventoy. It's really easy. Yes, it's an older video, but it's the exact same process to create one, and it's really helpful. After this mem test, I'm actually going to show you replacing some memory in a computer that was faulty earlier in the video, so that's going to be really cool to see. Also, if creating on Rufus, be sure to use the right image and the right scheme, so GPT for UEFI, MBR for Legacy. I believe on the right image, MBR still worked on UEFI, but I would still do GPT to be sure. But anyways, this computer passed the test and there's no issues with the RAM. So now I'm going to show you guys how to replace memory. So I'm putting this in the video. I'm replacing the RAM on the faulty laptop with this RAM right here because this laptop has faulty RAM. So there's the bad RAM stick right here and I'm going to get it out and yeah, this RAM stick is bad because I tested it with Memtest, as you guys know, and it was bad. I did unplug the battery. Always unplug the battery when you're doing anything like this because you don't want to fry anything or break anything. So always be sure the power and the battery is disconnected. So I'm going to put the new RAM in. I think that's in. And now I'm gonna do the same with the other stick. Be sure not to touch any of the like contacts and stuff either. So now I'm getting the other stick of RAM in. And now we have both of the sticks of RAM in the computer. 
And if they look like they're mostly in and you push them in and then you push it down, it should be good. I'm gonna see if this computer works. I will run a mem test, but I'm sure it will come back fine. But that is how you put RAM in a computer in case you do buy RAM. And I'm showing that I actually replaced the RAM because this stick is bad and I don't care that I'm touching the contacts because it's bad. So I put the RAM in and it is booting up. It is booting up a bit slower. The battery was dead because I tried powering it on before and it didn't turn on. So that's to be expected. But we're gonna see if the RAM is detected and everything. I put 16 gigs of RAM in this computer. Before it had eight gigs and that eight gig stick is bad, but it should have 16 now. Hopefully if this worked you always want to double check to make sure that the RAM amount you put in is there. We do have 16 gigs being detected. I will run a mem test again just to confirm it's good, although it should come back good because it's brand new. So yeah, I just replaced the RAM in this computer, so now it'll actually be usable again. Anyways, that's gonna conclude how to check for bad RAM and also how to replace it if it's a laptop, although all laptops are gonna be a bit different and they're gonna be in a different spot depending on manufacture and stuff like that. But I thought I'd show you guys replacing the RAM in mine since I just wanted to. But if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll help you guys with any questions you guys have. Anyways, thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and bye bye for now.